Ramos, and I am sitting in the middle of 34th Avenue. Who would have thunk it? The minute you put up the first gate, people step into the street, and it's like, just like, it's sort of like a symptom. You can just see the smiles on people's faces, the children running around, bike riders. It's really a nice thing for our community. I walk this street every morning, and sometimes in the evening, and I always see my friends. It's such a great way to reconnect, especially when a lot of us spend so much time indoors right now. We really feel isolated. This is like a reunion spot for kids to, from a distance, be able to see each other and ride their bikes together. People just want a little bit of fresh air, a chance to stretch their legs. People have come around to the idea that, yes, we do need this at a minimum for mental health. We come out here yeah. almost yeah. every day. Yeah. You come out to see the dogs and the people, and I get to run into people I didn't even know lived in our neighborhood. I love 34 Avenue. It's beautiful. The people enjoy the street, a lot of people. We have all this area totally monitored by volunteers, not police officers, not DOT people, just local volunteers, which makes it so special. This is just the beginning of so much more we can do. The beginning of the way that we can transform the way that we think about the relationship between us, our streets, and who the streets are for in our city. So, you know, Jackson Heights and Elmhurst have been considered to be the epicenter of the epicenter of the pandemic. This neighborhood is very, very densely populated and we need more open space. Council member Carlina Rivera, our speaker, Corey Johnson, were pushing the mayor to close streets and to open them up for communities like ours. I signed on immediately and I said, I need one of those in Jackson Heights. In our Senate district, which includes Jackson Heights, we've lost more than a thousand people that we know of. And of course, many more have been sick and even many more have been impacted directly, especially now that we're starting to see the economic crisis really unfold as a result of COVID. And in that way, this open street has really been a respite, a, a little slice of heaven for people who can't socially distance at home. Especially because we have so many immigrant families that don't have the privilege to socially isolate during a time like this. So to be able to have a closed street is transformative for our neighborhood. Anyone who's lived in Jackson Heights knows that our park is too small. We have one park, Traverse Park. So once we all said we need an open space now, we knew immediately it should be 34th Avenue. So the first iteration that we had for open streets was just really by our park. It was only a few blocks long. And on every corner, there seemed to be three or four officers of some kind. And it was really an uncomfortable thing because it felt like it was a checkpoint. The mayor uh, stopped the pilot and said that it wasn't working because uh, it was too expensive and, and involved too many police officers. Open our streets! Open our streets! We need to be able to navigate our streets safely. Families, the elderly, children. We need to get to work. We need to do our grocery shopping. A few of us sort of all at once thought, let's hold a rally. And we closed down one block and just had people chalking the street and playing and we were holding up big signs. And we just wanted to make some noise. We also wanted to show that, you know, if our elected officials, they had the support of their constituents. We got 10 very well-respected community partners to help call for open streets. And then we called from that and got volunteers from just about all of them to help every single morning and every single evening open and close the streets. Change always takes pressure. And we had to really show that the entire community wanted it. And I think once we were able to show them that we had volunteers who would take care of this space, that therefore the city kind of agreed and backed down and said, let's try it. But the reality is, is once you close the entire street, people know that it's closed and it becomes a promenade. And we were finally successful in getting it to go from 69th Street all the way up to Junction Boulevard. And that is the length of my district. So I'm really, really happy that we were able to accomplish this. We're planting some flowers here on the street because we'll keep it beautiful, my neighborhood. We went to Home Depot and we bought the flower. We were on money. The flowers are growing now. Look at, you can see here. 
we are very happy with the street open. We can walk, we can run around. It's very nice. We are very happy. People in this neighborhood, they like to talk. We like to connect to each other. And this is giving us an opportunity to connect more deeply. The people here are so friendly. It's a lot of, a lot of conversations started with total strangers. You know what I mean? To meet a lot of people from the community. And there's a lot of interesting people in Jackson Heights. It's not boring Queens. There is the standard things that you expect to see. Children playing, bicycle riding, people rollerblading. I've seen people picnic. I've seen our elders just be able to sit outside under a shady tree. And it really brings that warmth to our heart that we really need right now. He's a beginner bicyclist and riding on the sidewalk would be too difficult. So now he has the space to really learn how to be a better bicyclist. And it's just wonderful in the afternoon to see so many people using it. From 8 o'clock in the morning when I start putting out the gates until we put them back at 8 o'clock. Just saw a, a mom and her son, and they were out early, and they were standing right by the barricade. And I said, good morning, and they said, oh, we came out early because my son always wanted to know how this happened. He loves it so much, he wanted to see the behind the scenes look. This has always been a very beautiful avenue. I enjoy coming, you know, walking to the farmer's market on a Sunday morning. You're just blessed with a lot of trees, a lot of greenery. I think the most beautiful part about us having our closed streets is that we have taken it over as a community and used these streets as literally they are our streets. Um, we have some fabulous artists here in the community. There's entire chalk drawings on the entire block, which have been gorgeous. And the way people have been able to use the street and just simple chalk to play homage to people who have died in the coronavirus. People have been sporadically cleaning their own block, but we said, okay, everybody do their block every Saturday, 11 a.m. The night before, we put up fresh garbage bags so that on Saturday, anybody who's helping clean their block has a place to put the garbage. And then we have a few bicycles come down and grab those garbage bags and dispose of them properly. I almost feel like in a way, we are returning to one of the first ideas for Jackson Heights of being that garden community inside of the big city. I can't wait to push and make sure that this is indeed as, as permanent as it can be so that we can have uh, more streets be for people and not for cars. If you're out here at 7 p.m., it's really a time to come together. People are, if, if you happen to be out in the street, it's a nice time to just clap and run or clap and walk. If my kids are with their bikes, they'll just ring their little bells or we'll take pots and pans that's for bells. You know, you see intergenerational uh, contact and communication. You see whole families out with their grandmothers, their daughters and their grandkids and their cousins. I really love that. I think it's beautiful. And that's what makes our neighborhood so great. You painted those yourself? Yeah. I'd love it if it continued. You know, like, I, I don't expect it in the winter, although that would be fun to have snowball fights in the middle of the street. I mean, it's really kind of a modern solution to a modern problem. So I really would like to see the streets remain an open street. And I'm also hoping it can extend this open street into 114th, giving us a nice, safe street where People can walk safely and bike safely. I think we should definitely keep this closed moving forward and keep it an open street so that pedestrians, bike riders, children and their families and others in the community can enjoy this. We are living in a moment when we could radically transform how we think about our streets and our city and our life in the city and the way that we get around. It really does take bold ideas like this to push and make sure that we're changing not only policy, but I think the urban design that should be reflective of what our needs are today, not the needs that were decades ago. And I'm really looking forward to making it permanent and fighting for more green space. But I don't recognize my friends anymore if they have the mask off. <laughs> I have to tell him, please put it back on so I can recognize you with the mask. <laughs>